What's good with it, y'all? Welcome to Sunday Thursday, where we get laced up again because of the film studies that we got sliding through. And this is actually the first episode, man. So if y'all can, make sure to make a play. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if y'all want to see more film studies just like this. But in the office today, we got Kyrie Elam, my favorite cornerback coming out of this draft class. Yes, over at my size, Gardner and Derek Steenley. He was my number one corner coming out of the draft. People call me crazy. People call me crazy because the Mossars Gardner was so great. He should have been, he should, he's a top 10 pick as well as Derek Stingley. And you see Kyrie Elam going a later round, or excuse me, a later pick around what, 20 something. So, and he was picked up by the Bills, which is a brilliant pick by them. So this is why I wanted to bring it to everybody's attention that look, he's going to a team that's already in the AFC contention talks. And it's a defense that's doing very well. Plus, he's going to have a security blanket and two all-pro safeties. And on the other side of the field, we got a Tredavious White who's going to go out there and help him ball out and polish up his skills. We got a debut look of him against the Colts, and I'm going to bring it to y'all right now. So if y'all can't hit that like button, this is the first episode of Sunday Threads, and we're trying to build this thing up big. So if y'all can't, make sure to subscribe. So without further ado, man, let's go ahead and hop into this one. All right, y'all, just to get this one started right out the gate, I wanted to go ahead and show some of his run support. Now, we didn't get a lot of looks at it, but I did want to show how he was able to come up and make a play and get a tackle in this run game. Now, he doesn't come in as a guy that's going to be able to, you know, ultimately help a lot in the run game. He is a willing tackler, but he is more known as a coverage corner man coverage that is so you see here he's able to come up and definitely wrap up so let's go ahead and break this down real quick because i do like the initiative he takes here you see he's definitely keeping his eyes on the receiver to make sure he doesn't break out for a route but when he does realize that it ends up being a full initiative handoff he's able to engage come up and make a tackle now corners in general that can cover in man coverage they're usually not the best tacklers especially because of their build but you can see he definitely engages here able to wrap up he doesn't get too low but he's able to wrap up and get the tackle and hold on to him and bring him down for a tackle so you do like to see that out of a man coverage corner now this play right here this is where we're going to really start to get the cooking because my guy is at the bottom of your screen and he's going up against Alec Pierce, another rookie. This rookie won rookie crime right here. So Alex Pierce does have speed as well, mind you. And he is a big body receiver. So let's go ahead and take a look and let this play run out. And this is a beautiful play. Boom, double hit, punch, punch. And Alex Pierce didn't even stand a chance. That right there is all fundamentals. And you can see he's hyped because this was a third and four on the very first drive of this game. Now let's go ahead and go back and break this one down from the all 22 from this all 22 angle and there is the first punch you can see the first punch on that inside shoulder and elam is giving outside leverage so if he wants to cut back in alex pierce wants to cut back in because he has that inside punch and now he gives that inside punch and it's able to hold him up and that's where Kyrie elam is able to transverse his body in order to jump back inside and have some inside leverage so there was a double punch and then this is where he's able to engage and break the pass up. As we see, he's able to, the timing. This is something that's underrated as well, is the timing. Because if you get there too early, that's pass interference. But he gets the timing down and breaks up the pass on a third and four. And the Bills have a, I mean, the Bills made a brilliant pick by getting Kyrie Elam. And like I said, he was my favorite corner coming out of the draft. And the fact they go get him, and they already have a stacked defense with two crazy safeties going at it. Hard to see from this angle, but I did want to give you guys a second look. Hard to see. So let's go ahead and hop into this next play. You can see he's at the top of the screen again in a jam situation. And this is why I loved him coming out of college. He did this in the sec against all the teams he was on the island he did it against every team and he did it against alabama all those receivers so let's go ahead and see what he has in store for us here another punch low same pretty much the same technique he did on that last play now let's go back and take a look at it one more time now i want you guys to see he opened he's opening up outside leverage and he gives that inside punch and that's how he's able to stay on top of this receiver now, I did have somebody tell me I do respect, and they're a DB coach, and he said that coming out of college, he was very handsy, and that he was worried about he would have to be, uh, had to be taught to not be as handsy, but I did like his physicality, I did like his, how he would be able to be handsy, and get his hands on a receiver, and ultimately be able to get over top of them in these kind of situations. I'm not too upset 
with how he was able to get get that punch off. And I never was never concerned with his handsiness. I know he did have some penalties coming out of college. Um, some people were concerned about, but I think that comes with physicality and wanting to be a physical man coverage corner. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So let's go ahead and hop into this next play though, man. And now here's a situation where we have him in the slot. Now we've got a chance to see him in the run game. We've got a chance to see him outside perimeter and press man coverage, doing a slant and doing the deep route. And I'm gonna guys, give you guys a, an idea of what we're gonna see here. It's going to be a slant route. We're going ahead let this one play he's able to pick it up but this one is a situation to where i did want to show the handsiness we were just talking about right because i feel like in a regular game he could potentially be called for pass interference for this i mean in the preseason right now in the midst of what's going on i don't think they're going to call it because they're trying to let these guys play but in regular season he's definitely going to have to clean that up because you could see a slight tug right there a slight tug and depending on how the referees feel and depending on who they're playing, maybe that quarterback and receiver, if they cry enough, you're going to get that call. You're going to get that call. Just that right there. And you can see how the arm of the receiver kind of draws back. Now, that could be a natural motion of him running, but at the same time, that's all it takes. That's all it takes as a cornerback. So, Kyrie Elam... You know, he does get physical. He's not perfect, far from it, but he is a special talent that I definitely could be biased because he was my favorite coming out of the, coming out of college. But at the same time, going in the first round, it's still a quality pick. Now, here is the last play of this breakdown. And I wanted to bring this one because, like I said, I don't like to be biased. I want to be transparent. I wanted to show plays to where I believe he still has to work on some things. And there he was a little handsy. He does need to work on that. But he was in the slot. Now here he is on the outside and someone's able to get a dig route on him. And I wasn't able to actually see who this um, who this was. I believe it's Alex Pierce again, who we've seen at the top of this film study. This time, now when we break it down, he gives that inside punch and then gives inside leverage. Did you guys see that? Now, in the past couple plays that we watched, he gave an inside punch and gave outside leverage. Let's take a look right there. He loves that inside punch. Boom, there's the inside punch. Then he gives up the inside. Now, when you follow this play and you see that it's man coverage, I'm assuming he was expecting some help from this robber right here. I'm not sure who that is, but you can see he dropped down and he was dropping into a zone. He didn't really have a specific man to cover. And I think that's what he was looking for and why he gave up that inside zone. Now let's watch it one more time because this is the last play. This was a good route. Kyrie Elam was in his hip pocket right here. He doesn't break down fast enough though. He doesn't react and break down fast enough. But at the same time, he did have that inside guy playing the robber, which he thought he may have had a little bit more help there. And then Alec Pierce is also coming back to the football, which is a good route. Why well, I think that was a good route by Alec Pierce. So that wraps up the film study on Kyrie Elam. Look, I said he was my favorite corner, but he does some, have some things to work on. Let me know down in the comments if you guys think he could potentially be the best corner out of this draft. Also, let me know, do you guys think that was a pass interference when he was in that slot position? Because I believe it was, and he could potentially be called for that. So he can't be handsy at times. Let me know what you guys think of him and what you critique. And also, what do you guys think about him being drafted by the Bills? I thought it was a very smart pick by them. You know, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, you can check me out at Raid the Tape, or you guys can hit me up on Twitter at Raid the Tape as well. And if you guys want to check out some of this gear, this is my brand called Redemption Brand. So y'all can hit that up as well. I appreciate y'all being here until next time y'all lace up